Hey, Mrs. Potter's class. I'm here at Oceanic Avenue at the Clock Tower Plaza in Orange City. I have a treat for you. Let's go on inside. You can send me a copy one through them. I will. So this is Oceanic Avenue. It's a tropical saltwater fish tour. In the live ocean itself, the ocean is a filtration system by itself. What that means is it cleans the water, purifies it for the fish. The coral reef and the plants below the ocean actually filters the water, so there is no need for any type of mechanical or chemical filtration, which means you're adding liquid to the water to keep it clean, or you're putting any kind of equipment in order to go ahead and purify the water for the fish. The waves act as a protein skimmer, which is a device used to pull out all the excess nutrients and waste from the water. So the waves actually go out in the ocean and bring all the garbage out and put it back to the shore and keeps moving the water currently to have that water clean for the fish all the time. So there's very little chance of the fish catching a disease or, or dying from something in the ocean because the water is so large. Even if there's a small problem, the water gets diluted into that problem itself and then the fish is safe to live there. When you bring fish home, saltwater fish, now you're creating an environment that you control. It's no longer up to nature or by the ocean. You're bringing a piece of nature in your home. So when you create an aquarium, now you have to substitute what the ocean was doing naturally inside of your living room. So when you get an aquarium and you're first starting with saltwater, you have to create a livable environment for them. So you can cycle the tank, which means break down all the chemicals that the tank were made with to get everything up and running, and that normally takes about two weeks. You would normally introduce into the water live sand, which is what I have here, and then you put the live rock, which house and hold the beneficial bacteria to create a livable cycle for the saltwater fish to be able to live. Once that cycle passes two weeks, then your water is not considered safe. So you would do something called water testing, which is to measure the amount of salt that you're putting in the water for the fish to be able to survive in there compared to what they have in their natural environment. When you do that and you make the water safe for the fish, now the fish is able to go in there and start living like they were in the ocean. Then everything else that you add to the aquarium is based on what your preference is. You can either put just some decorations and rocks, ships, or anything like that that you want to have as something for them to surround themselves with, or you can go with the natural environment, which is the reef ocean. This is all live rocks, live sand, live plants. Everything here is alive for the fish that allows the fish to be able to feel at home in their environment. Whenever you're choosing the reef system or the reef ocean, this is more of uh, choose your fish at the beginning stage because certain fish can live in the ocean and not eat your plants, whereas some fish will eat the plants. So all the fish that you see here are considered reef safe. That means that they will not eat my plants. And then when you create this environment, you're actually creating a part of the natural reef system, which again, houses the fish in their natural environment for them to live. I have a lot of different fish, a lot of different um, creatures that live in the ocean. I have everything from the seahorses behind you. The seahorses behind you are very delicate. They live in a very slow moving paced environment. The water for them has to be a very slow current because they don't have fins like a fish. They can't navigate the water. On their backs, they have these two little fins that almost looks like butterfly wings. And that's the only way that they can channel the water when the current is moving. So if you're setting up a seahorse tank, you need to have the water pressure really slow. They also like to take long naps, so I keep the light dim for them. And then they glide through the water throughout the day. The only way that they have to hold themselves back if the water is too strong is with their tail. So when you set up an aquarium for seahorses, you need to have something for them to hold on to in order to save themselves if the water is too strong. A good starter fish to start off your saltwater aquarium with would be the clownfish. The clownfish is one of the most hardiest fish to have in your aquarium because they're considered um, resilient to if your water salinity, if your salt in your aquarium is not too low or it's a little too high or you forgot to do your water change and the chemistry is a little off, they will still survive. They're one of the hardiest fish to have. So it's good to start off with those. And also later down the line, if you decide that you want to go ahead and add plants to your aquarium, clownfish are also safe to have in that environment so they can live with your plants and not eat them. Clownfish are born gender neutral. What that means is there is no sex to them. They're neither male nor female. 
when they get a little bit older to breeding age, which is normally about six months or older, then one will automatically become the female, which will be the largest of the species, and then one of the, that, gender, that gender neutral um, pack will turn into a male, and then they begin to breed. And when they breed, the female will lay the eggs, the male will fertilize the eggs, and then protect the eggs all the way up until when the babies are hatched. They get, they get very protective of their babies and the eggs and so protective and defensive that they can kill other fish by nipping and fighting other fish to protect the eggs. They're very good at parents all the way up until the eggs are hatched, but after that, they will eat the babies. So you would need to remove the babies if you wanna keep them before the eggs are hatched. How do you know when the eggs are gonna be hatched? They turn color. So when the eggs are first laid, they're normally like a clear color to a orangish color. And before they're hatched, they turn into a brownish black color. And then you will see like a little eye moving inside of it. That's when you separate the eggs from the parent. If you want the eggs to survive, you would have to have a separate system filled with food and different equipment in order for those babies to survive. They're called fry when they're a baby. And when they get older, now they at least a month or two months down the road, then they will be considered baby Nemo's. And then from there, now you can move them back into your tank with the parents, they wouldn't eat them. Can I ask you real quick, are this would be, are they these old enough that they have a gender because they're together? Yes, so the largest one in here is the female, the smaller one is the male. You can crossbreed different clownfish. Example, you can have a cinnamon clown and you can have an oscillaris clown. You can have a snowflake clown and a different clown as long as it's male and female and it's identified sex, you can crossbreed them and they will still breed. But for, these are Ocellaris? Yes, these are the Ocellaris clowns. This, the orange one is more closer to our Clark clown, but he's still considered this part of the Ocellaris family. The orange one is pure Ocellaris. Okay. Which is from the TV show Nemo. And the Ocellaris is the most common? Yes. Okay. They're one of the most common, the most easiest to breed, the, the easiest to keep, hardiest fish. All right, and they're in there with the dory, what yes. we call the, the dory. Right, so the natural name for dory is a hippo tank, or blue regal hippo tank is the natural name for it. Dory is from the movie Finding Nemo, so people tend to associate this particular fish with the name dory. So whenever you say dory, they know they're looking for a blue hippo tank. Um, there is another version of this fish um, where the belly of the fish is completely yellow and the top half is blue. That's also a hippo tank as well. But it's very rare and it's a little bit more expensive so you don't really see too much in home aquariums like this. But what we've learned from working with you on setting up our saltwater aquarium is the dories are pretty expensive just from their popularity with the movie. Yes. Um, a small one like this one is about... It's approximately $75 right now because of shipment cost and the way to get them in the country because they're imported, most of them. And they go through a huge distribution center where they're acclimated and then pet shops like myself will contact the distribution center to have them sent here and then I'll be available. Um, I will tell you guys, at my home we have two Ocellaris clowns. We have a male and a female. Um, we don't allow them to breed. Um, we just don't have the right setup in our tank. And we have a dory. They play very well together. Okay. So then, the Nemo fish is most happy in a long tentacle anemone, which is a, a large plant that they like to house themselves in. And the reason they feel safe in there is because the long tentacles pr provide protection for the fish. Sometimes when the fish goes out, the Nemo fish goes out and gets the food, it brings some back for the anemone as a, a two-way relationship. They don't always bond together as an anemone and the clownfish. It's a two-way relationship where they need to choose each other and then they would live in that housing uh, situation. But once they do, then they're one of the happiest. In here to the back, you'll see one of the long tentacle anemones. That's the type that they normally like to live in. Uh, most of the plants are asleep right now because I just opened, but later on in the day, you'll see everything up and open. Um, these are some of the other fish that I carry. This one right here is called a bat fish. This grows to about 15 inches, almost the size of a basketball. This fish recommended tank size is about 100 gallons. You can always buy them small, but when they start growing, he's almost 8, 9 inches right now. And they live up to about 15 years depending on water care and how you feed them and the chemistry in the water, things like that. 
They're one of the most um, docile uh, community type of fish. They're non-aggressive. If it's anything, they get picked on, even though of their size. Other fish doesn't um, doesn't care if they're bigger. They will still nip at the fins. That's why he's separate. If you would like to have a fish like this in your aquarium, you would have to put him in a tank that all the other fish are very slow moving, calm fish. Something like seahorses, mandarin gobies, those are very calm fish. Butterflies are very calm too. You can put him with fish like that. But you can't really put him with any kind of tangs like dory or the yellow tang. They will nip at his fins and it will damage the fish. You could also put him with the cowfish, right? Yes. So the cowfish is a very calm fish. He very swims very um, slow down, mostly down to the bottom of the water. So they wouldn't really interfere with him. Um, some of the other fish I have is a dog face puffer. This one comes in a different variety of puffers. Um, some of them are a little bit more different shape to the front, but he also has a full row of teeth when he opens his mouth. You might not be able to see it here, but his teeth almost looks like human teeth. When he opens his mouth, you'll see a whole top row. There you go. A whole top row and a whole bottom row of teeth. He's showing his teeth off. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the few fish that actually has full row of teeth and it's even evenly spread, almost like if he had braces on. Oh my goodness. It's not twisted in any way. If you look at it, the shape of it when he opens his mouth. He is really like, there showing him off. Look see? at him. My his parents pay for braces and then he has braces. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. This is a lionfish, this is a predator fish. He only eats live food and sometimes I give him the frozen uh, fish. In order for him to eat the frozen fish, I have to dangle it above the water and make him think it's alive. Otherwise, he would not eat it. I will take that same fish and drop it in the water and he will not touch it. But if I pick that fish up and I dangle it over the water, he will go after it and grab it because he thinks it's a real. Now, does he have to be by himself? He is a predator fish. He has to be by himself or with other predator fish. Things like triggers or bigger fish, anything that he can't fit in his mouth. He grows about 12 inches. He's also venomous. Those feather looking things on the side, each one is equivalent to the sting of a bee. If three of those touch you, there's so three bees stinging you at the same time. It's very, very venomous. You can't touch it at all, any part. But if he stings you, unlike a bee that gets their stinger in you and then they die, he won't. No. It doesn't bother him. No, and if you can really see to the end of the fins, you're going to see like a little sharp point. Yes. Those are the little venom points that he sticks you with. That's a way for him to defend himself. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's one of the most beautiful fish. They also come in a dwarf angel, a dwarf um, lionfish size. So the dwarf lionfish will be a little bit more reddish brown in color. He's a little bit more shorter and then he is also venomous, but you can put him with other fish because he will not eat the fish because he's smaller than this full size. But is he still a predator? He's still a predator, but he wouldn't go after a larger fish like a, a wrasse or a clownfish because of his size. This one will. This okay. one will eat anything that's he will eat anything like clownfish, uh, grasses, he will eat the the hawkfish that's a pork oh. perch fish right there. We have the hawkfish at home. So the hawkfish is a perch of fish, that means he just sits on the rocks, he will sit on the um, the power heads, he will sit on anything that he can find and he just looks around. He's not a swimming fish to swim back and forth across the aquarium. He will just sit on the rocks and then just look around. There's many different versions of hawkfish. This is just one. This one is called a falco hawkfish or a red spotted hawkfish. There's another one that's called a flame hawk. There's another one that's called a long nose hawkfish. There's many different versions of hawkfish. And then over here you have some of the other ones. This one is called a pork fish. He's one of the few small little fish that has a lot of colors. He's a schooling fish and he'll do very well with other fish that swims along the water with him. This one here is called a banarass. He's part of the ras family. He's one of the most colorful that people look after. This one right here is called a purple firefish. He's also one of the most popular little ones. Then you have the this one here is called a cotton wick grunt fish. He's also a schooling type fish with the little diamond color eyes. And then you have the pygmy angel, which is this little tiny one. Perfect for anyone who wants a small little 30 gallon or 20 gallon aquarium um, that you want to go ahead and set up and put saltwater fish. He's perfect for that size. This one here is called a coral beauty. 
is one of the most colorful fish. He has purple, orange, yellow, almost a lot of colors on that fish itself. And then over here, I have some of the bigger ones. These are the ones that I raised. So this one here is called a flamingi tang. He grows to about 12 to 14 inches. He's already pushing about 12. He has about a couple more inches to grow and then he'll be full grown. And this one here is the fox face. He's also venomous with those spines. You can't let the spines touch you, it will sting. Really? Yes. This one here is called a heniacus. He normally has a long banner on the back, but these are mines that I raised and a couple years back he got sick. I was able to save him, but the banner fell off and it didn't grow back. This one here is called the blue angel. From birth until adult, he stays that color and he just gets larger. Then the colors get embedded into the scales itself and now you'll see the coloration into the scale of the fish. The queen angel is this one here. He normally starts off with blue and yellow as a baby. Then he goes all yellow like this when he's going through the color change and later when he gets older, he's gonna turn into a more coloration just like the blue angel. This one is called a bicolored goldfish. The bicolored goldfish has those long tentacles on the front of him. He uses this to feel for food in the ground and he acts like a cleanup crew. In an aquarium like this, I can't put the regular cleanup crew, which is crabs and snails, to go after the food in the tank because my larger fish will go after them and pick off their legs and eat the, eat the cleanup crew. So I can't put them in here. I need something else that would work. The goldfish does the job. He goes in the ground and feels around and looks for all the leftover food. Then the clown wrasse, this one right here this one he mixes up the sand for me so he will completely bury himself and cover up in the sand like a like a blanket and then when he's not doing that then he'll move around and eat any food he's also a, a carnivore so as soon as i drop anything that's meaty in there like a fish he'll grab it and take off he doesn't share <laughs> it's gone this one here is called the green bird wrasse they also come in brown and the green bird wrasse is one of the, the rarest looking fish. It almost looks like an anteater with a long nose, but his name is a, the green bird wrasse. Now, does he hide in the sand? No. He's, he's a very out. active swimmer. He likes to move around. He grows to about 9, 10 inches, so he's almost full grown. Okay, he has a little bit. He has okay. a little bit more to grow. There's also a brown one just like him, but I don't have any right now. This one is a lavender tang. Yep, those are the tentacles. By the way, guys, that's Mrs. Potter's favorite fish. <laughs> they are in season, so it depends on when they're in season. I can get more. Right now, they're out of season. Um, just like the seahorses, seahorses are in season too. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but seahorses, the males is the one that actually give birth. The female transfers the eggs to the male. The male has a larger pouch in the front. Then within a couple weeks later, then the male will give birth to the babies. And then you would have anywhere from 100 to 200 babies in the tank. They're also called fry. You also need a special tank set up in order to feed the fry before they turn into little baby seahorses before you can move them back into the tank with the parents. If you have baby seahorses and you know that the male is carrying the babies and he's ready, it's better to take him out of the equation and put him into the tank that you know you're going to have ready with the food and everything. And after he gives baby, then you take him out back and you put him back into your regular tank. Within a couple of months after the fry is at least a visible size that they're able to move on their own and not can be considered as food for the others, then you take them and you move them back into the tank with the parents. Wow. That's a lot so of work. A, a lot of a lot of these fish will eat their young without yes. even realizing it. Yeah, fish is the all, one of the only animals in, in all nature itself that fish will eat fish. You wouldn't see a lion eating a lion or zebra eating a zebra or, or a cat eating a cat, you would always see fish eat fish. This is why most um, fishermen when they go out in the ocean to catch, they're actually using live fish. And then they would cast it off their boat and they would catch real big fish with baby fish. Well that fish makes sense fish. because sharks will deliver, well they have their babies and they leave their young. Interesting fact I learned along the way. <laughs> So, did you guys have any other questions? Uh, tell me about these clowns. Those are, what those are cinnamon, cinnamon clowns. Cinnamon clowns are aggressive towards other clownfish because they like to choose a spot in your tank and then they become dominant to that spot. They would protect it and then they would fight other clownfish. So, very rare you're able to get cinnamon clown and the oscillaris clown living in the same tank. 
um, most of the time cinnamon um, oscillators clowns even though you have a very large tank like this is a 300 gallon low iron glass um, aquarium tank right now even though if you have an aquarium this size the clownfish still likes to be on the top because they're fear of predators below so sometimes they will come down and they will mingle between all your different um, rock work or things like that but almost 90 percent of the time they will be at the top it's just a natural fear to them that if they come down there's predators below so they will always stay on the top um, most of the times when they do come down below is if the fish are very small or they don't sense any type of danger but for fish like this they will consider it a danger because they're bigger they're on a larger scale cinnamon clowns are growing to be anywhere between three to five inches and these are almost full grown and how old are they they are about maybe four i would say maybe four or five years old right now so much for taking the time with us today. Yeah. Guys, this is Oceanic Avenue. Please stop by. It's right here in Orange City. Um, Mr. Potter and I come here. I think Mr. Potter probably more than me. Um, we've gotten a lot of our fish here. We've just really gotten started on our saltwater aquarium. Jay sells all saltwater stuff. This is a beautiful location and we're lucky to have it here in West Volusia. I'm going to get some information for you and have it posted in the video. If you're interested in the saltwater aquarium, this is definitely your spot to come. I'm going to say to you bye for now. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. See y'all. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Every time I come to Oceanic Avenue, I find out something new and exciting about saltwater fish. If you want to check it out, again, I'm in Orange City at the Clock Tower Plaza. Go in and see Jay and learn more yourself. I'm going to say bye for now.